This is ABC 15 Mornings. We remain on wildfire watch. Weather's going to dictate the, the, the course of action that we take. Team coverage this morning as Arizona is on fire. Taking care of veterans. The stench was horrific. It smelled like burning rubber. It burned 24-7. Is the government doing enough to help those who've served? The fight over masking up. There is an indoor mask mandate, yet I'm seeing so many people without masks, so it's really quite confusing. The travel mask mandate heading back to court. Getting back to work. Really could be done by somebody who've gotten reskilled or upskilled. What can be done to help more people find better jobs? And we do want to begin with the latest on what's happening with our wildfire situation across Arizona. Let's get right to the latest on the tunnel fire devastating communities near Flagstaff. At least 25 homes and buildings destroyed. And once again, our weather is only going to make this fire fire even more difficult. We do have complete team coverage for you this morning. Our Jamie Warren's diving deeper into what we can expect this fire season. Meteorologist Iris Hermosillo is tracking the latest fire alerts. So we begin with meteorologist Jorge Torres, who is live in Flagstaff. Yannick and Kaylee, we just got brand new information regarding fire growth overnight. They tell me that the fire did grow a little bit. Now it's at 20,527 acres as of now. Still 0% containment. And of course, the wind's going to be a concern. Uh, in fact, it has been already. The wind's been gusting throughout the morning and will likely continue uh, over the next several hours. So obviously, the next couple of days are going to be crucial uh, regarding the firefight uh, here in Flag 7, right around the San Francisco peaks. Obviously, and officials say the high winds have kept pilots from uh, trying to put the fire out from the air and uh, hopefully there'll be some improvement here in the next couple of days but that's just kind of been the case for a while again approximately 260 people are assigned to this fire we've met with several already this morning approximately 24 structures unfortunately have been lost to including homes and hundreds of people remain evacuated now the county does say that they have been in contact with restoration companies and trash services for when evacuees can go back home but the sheriffs do tell us uh, before anyone can return after the fire is out potential has like livestock and propane in the area need to be cleared and utilities need to be restored too. There is also a community assistance center being launched today to help evacuees with housing, animal services, and food too. Also, Highway 89 remains closed north of Flagstaff with no timetable as to when it'll reopen according to ADOT. And of course, uh, we've talked about uh, for the past several hours, the Type 1 incident management team will be uh, coming out here to the fire later today and taking command uh, tomorrow because the wind is still going to be a concern regarding this fire. And speaking of which, meteorologist uh, Iris, Iris Amorcillo joins us now to talk a little more about the wind that's going to be concerned here and throughout the state as well. Iris? Yeah, Jorge, you know, we're all keeping a close eye on the winds, and you can actually hear some of those winds where you are right now. And like you said, they've been ongoing overnight. They've been lighter, that's for sure. But as the day goes on, that wind speed will go up. So as we look at the fire danger forecast, you're seeing more of those darker oranges right where the tunnel fire is burning, an indication that again today, not only will conditions remain really dry, but winds are going to increase in speed. And today, those winds stronger than what we had yesterday. Temperatures in that area in the 60s to just about 70 degrees. Winds will be coming out of the southwest this afternoon between about 15 and 20 miles an hour. Those wind gusts, though, topping out closer to 40 miles an hour today as relative humidity values remain in the teens. So you can expect that once again, if there is fire growth, it's going to grow towards the northeast as those winds coming in out of the southwest push it in that direction and you can expect that the smoke will also be flowing towards the northeast as well. Because winds are picking up speed and because conditions remain really dry, we are back under fire weather warnings across northern Arizona. This was a watch I told you about yesterday that was likely going to be upgraded and it was late yesterday. Now that it, uh, rather fire weather warning remains in place from 11 a.m. today to 8 o'clock here tonight and then tomorrow those winds pick up even more, but it looks like tomorrow we may have have a little bit of moisture coming in that could help make things a little bit easier for those fire crews. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit, but as you're stepping outside, maybe here in the valley, a live look at Camelback Mountain. Our temperature at 66 degrees. Winds are light right now. We've got clear skies. The sun is now up. You may want to get out soon if you want to get out to maybe go for a hike because it will be warmer today. A high of 94, some breezes this afternoon. Then tomorrow, the winds pick up here too. We'll talk about those speeds and how much cooler it's going to be heading into the weekend in that full forecast still ahead. All right, Iris, you've talked about this. Fire leaders too, sharing these warnings for several weeks now about our wildfire season. 
saying that it could be more severe, more devastating compared to years past. And right now we're seeing proof of this. Let's bring in Jamie Warren, who's looking into the fire danger the state is facing right now, Jamie. Well, Nick and Kaylee, all it takes is one small spark on something like this to cause a fire. And as we have learned, a lot of these fires are human caused, which means that they could have been prevented. In fact, in Cochise County, we have learned that the Camino fire was caused by a driver who was dragging chains on their vehicle. That driver could eventually face fines or criminal charges. And new this morning, it is now believed that the Crooks fire near Prescott is also human caused. This comes just weeks after state officials urged people to be vigilant because of the extreme fire danger. The entire Southwest is expected to have an above normal potential for fires in May and in June, but we are already seeing them in April. Also, there aren't enough people available to fight these fires. The job for a wildland firefighter starts at just $16 an hour, and the state's Department of Forestry and Fire Management says that everyone should be concerned about this staffing shortage. So the amount of resources that are needed now to combat the wildland fire, we just don't have enough folks that are willing to come out uh, and uh, you know do the job that we do. And this is not just something that you should worry about if you live in the forest here in the valley. It is also a big concern. That is why in less than two weeks, the Phoenix Parks and Recreation Department is going to put into effect a ban on open fires throughout our desert parks and mountain preserves. So that includes right here at Papago Park. And what this means is no smoking, also no wood or charcoal open fires. You can still barbecue, but it does need to be in a designated picnic area. Nick and Kaylee, I'll send things back to you. We just have so much fuel ripe to burn here. All right, our Jamie Warren live this morning. I want you to know that you can count on ABC 15 to bring you the latest wildfire updates on air, online, and on our free ABC 15 mobile app. In the meantime, let's send things over to Megan Thompson, who is taking a quick look at the roads for us this morning here in the valley, but also in the high country, Megan, because we know there are some closures. Yes, Jorge mentioned it. US 89 is closed, and here is what we're tracking with that closure. The northbound lanes at milepost 423, the southbound lanes at milepost 445, just north of Flagstaff. I wanted to offer some all alternates for you. If you need to get around this area, here's what ADOT is telling folks to do. Take westbound I-40. That's an option to northbound SR-64. That will give you access to 89 beyond this closure that you see here. Another option for you is eastbound I-40, taking that to northbound 87, the 87 SR, and then westbound SR-264 to westbound 160. That will give you access to US-89 beyond that closure. As we take you wide to a view of the current conditions here in the valley, that typical slowing. Plus, we do have a stalled vehicle to tell you about. It is on the off ramp at Bethany Hill Road and the northbound lanes of the 51 as you're getting off of the freeway. Plus, here's that slowing there on the 10 and the 17. So here are those desert drive times, 25 minutes on the 10 from the 303 to the mini stack, but looking great on the 17 and the 51. Well, the Biden administration could ask an appeals court for a stay of a judge's uh, previous ruling that ended the federal mass mandate on public transportation. Well, the Department of Justice did officially appeal. And if a stay is granted, passengers would be required to wear a mask, or they could be, until an official ruling is made. And a new poll from the Associated Press finding 56% of Americans are in favor of the face mask requirements on planes, trains, and other forms of public transportation. 24% opposing this and 20% say they don't mind either way. Meantime, the FAA says it is keeping its zero tolerance policy for unruly passengers. This went into effect during the pandemic, all to curb the surge in disruptive and even violent behavior on planes. The rule allows the FAA to fine people up to $37,000 for those who do get unruly. In the headlines this morning, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordering troops not to storm a steel plant in Mariupol. He said the area should be sealed off and people inside should be allowed to surrender in exchange for their lives. Ukrainian officials say heavy shelling in the city has not stopped. Today, President Joe Biden is expected to announce the U.S. will send another $800 million in military aid to Ukraine. Specific details of the aid package have not been released. 
Home sales are starting to slow down a little bit. The National Association of Realtors says sales of previously owned homes fell last month to their lowest pace in nearly two years, primarily due to rising mortgage rates and record high prices. Today, Queen Elizabeth turns 96 years old. Britain's longest living monarch will celebrate with her family. Barbie's actually releasing a Queen Elizabeth doll in honor of her birthday and her platinum jubilee. That's 70 years on the throne. Wow. Well, up next here on ABC 15 Mornings, attention foodies, this is for you, a new restaurant coming to the Valley, and it's for those of you who love a good burger. Lots of security alert, what our Arizona diving bags had to do with an evacuation of the U.S. Capitol. Then millions of veterans exposed to burn pits while they served overseas. Up next, will Congress pass any bills to help those suffering with these health issues? Stay with ABC 15 Arizona for continuing wildfire coverage on air, online, and these streaming devices. As we talk about your most accurate forecast, yesterday another day of strong winds. And I just wanted to show you some of the peak wind gusts. They weren't as strong as what we felt on Tuesday, but they did top 30 miles an hour in spots like Flagstaff, even stronger in eastern Arizona yesterday. But here's the deal. Today, those wind gust speeds go up even further. And then tomorrow, those winds will be even stronger as our next storm system finally moves by. And that's the one that's going to start to pick up those speeds today. And then again, especially tomorrow. Now right now winds below 10 miles an hour in most spots. We do have some breezes out in Sholo though and also in Winslow. But as we go through the day, those wind speeds are going to go back up. And as you're looking for those darker reds, that's where we're going to see the stronger winds today. Anywhere from about Flagstaff to the Grand Canyon to Kingman to Bullhead City. Some breezes here in the valley, but they'll be much lighter than what they'll feel up north and also breezy in southeastern Arizona. But then as I fast forward through the overnight hours, typically what we see are those winds really backing off overnight before they pick up speed again. But what's going to happen tonight is it's likely going to still be breezy across that northern half of our state. So not a whole lot of relief from those winds overnight tonight for fire crews. And then tomorrow those winds crank up across the state with windy conditions here in the valley, but especially in that eastern portion from Window Rock to Winslow to Sholo, those wind speeds really going up and those areas will be under alerts uh, because of those stronger winds. So here's the forecast for winds in northern Arizona today and tomorrow. Windy today, gusts could be as high as 40 miles an hour as those winds coming out of the southwest. Tomorrow, though, we're talking gusts as high as 50 to 55 miles an hour with southwesterly winds sustained anywhere from 25 to 35 miles an hour. So dangerous conditions when it comes to our fire threat, especially today. Tomorrow winds will be stronger, but there's a glimmer of hope that we'll get a little bit more moisture. And as a result, some showers that could reduce that fire risk across northern Arizona tomorrow, despite the stronger winds in the forecast. Today, though, still really dry. And because of that, we've got red flag warnings or fire weather warnings in effect today across that northern pocket of our state. And for southeast Arizona, those alerts will be in place tomorrow. Tomorrow too, we've got wind advisories. Notice those wind gusts peaking near 55 miles an hour in that eastern pocket of our state. And again, tomorrow, very strong winds prompting those wind advisories. No wind alerts for the valley, but it's going to be breezy to windy the next couple of days. Today, breezy gusts near 20 miles an hour to 25. Tomorrow, though, gusts could top that 30 mile an hour mark again. So similar to what we had on Tuesday, but these winds will bring in cooler air. So today, warmer up to 94, but look what's happening tomorrow. The high down to just 79 degrees. So that's what you've got to look forward to tomorrow. If you don't mind the winds picking up speed right now, as you walk out the door, we've got temperatures in the 50s to 60s around the valley. Highs today topping out in the low 90s. Our 30 year average is 87. So we will be above normal today, then below normal tomorrow. The weekend looking really nice. The winds also backing up or easing up rather across the state this weekend. Next week, high pressure brings warmer weather and we could see our first triple digit day next week. We'll be watching that closely. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Well, good Thursday morning to you. I'm Megan Thompson. It has been busy out there on the roads. We are easing up just a little bit just before rush hour starts to begin. So here's what you need to know as I give you a wide view of what's going on all across the valley. Mostly green conditions are typical slowing on the 10 and the 17. Plus, we do have some updates for you on that northbound lane, uh, that exit ramp at Bethany Home Road at the 51 with the stalled vehicle. 
It's cleared out of the way. You shouldn't have any issues if that's how you exit the northbound lanes of the freeway. Here's some of that slowdown we're seeing as you're passing the loop 101. You'll be seeing nice green conditions on the road. You will start to tap those brakes right after the 202 South Mountain Interchange. If you're heading towards the stack, your speed right around 25 miles per hour, right around 50 to 55 miles per hour on the 17 southbound along the Durango curve. Your drive time on the 10 from the loop 303 to the mini stack is looking to be about a half hour right now with that speed limit dropping about 15 miles per hour or so below the speed limit. Now as we track those speed limits with traffic predictor over the next half hour or so, here's what we're looking at by 7 a.m. on the I-10 from the 303 to the mini stack on average 42 miles per hour. That's what traffic predictor says. Then right around 60 miles per hour on the 17 from the 101 to the stack staying in the green right around 65 miles per hour on the 51 from the 101 to the mini stack. Well, for years, veterans have been fighting to get better health care coverage after being exposed to burn pits. Many are upset that Congress isn't helping them. OK, so what is the holdup? Our Joe St. George takes an in-depth look at the issue. From Veronica Landry. A lot of people look at me and they're like, why at your age do you have to have oxygen? To Leroy Torres. Um, I was living by the infamous burn pits. We uh, have shared with you plenty of stories about veterans and burn pits over the years. To refresh your memory, a burn pit was often used in Iraq and Afghanistan by the military to get rid of waste. Jet fuel was used to keep the fires going. Typically, they looked like this. The problem, all that burning created toxins that many service members and contractors believe made them sick. Torres, who lives in Texas, told us recently he should never have been that close and his lungs have never been the same. The stench was horrific. It smelled like burning rubber. It burned 24 seven. The issue is that the VA system doesn't recognize burn pit exposure the same way it does, let's say, being involved in a bombing. It's estimated over 3 million vets were exposed over the years, though coverage and benefits Benefits by the VA are often denied. For years, celebrities like Jon Stewart have pressured Congress to act, but so far it hasn't worked. Let's dig a giant pit, 10 acres long, and burn everything in Washington with jet fuel. And then let me know how long they want to wait before they think it's going to cause some health problems. You're probably asking yourself the same question that I asked myself. Why are lawmakers not providing these benefits already? And like many things in politics, it's because the issue is complicated. This will lead to longer wait times for veterans. It'll put a strain on the VA resources. One reason it hasn't passed yet is because there are concerns from conservative congressmen like Mike Bost of Illinois. He fears the VA may not be able to handle the influx of new patients and is also worried about cost. One proposal, known as the PACT Act, has already passed the House with a total price tag of $300 billion over 10 years. Whether Congress actually changes laws before the election is unclear, but Torres and others do feel their moment for change is now. President Biden made the issue a priority in his State of the Union address. Finally, he's picked up traction after the 12 years. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. At 624 here on ABC 15 Mornings, as the pandemic subsides, more parents are heading back to the office. What can be done, though, to help working families succeed? Across the state, thousands of people remain out of their homes at 630. Complete team coverage of the major wildfires burning in Arizona. And at 639, we're talking Suns, the team gearing up for game three of the playoffs without Devin Booker. And at 649, how close are we going to get to those triple digits? Prepare to sweat as things heat up in your Super 7 Day Forecast. Well, mark your calendars. Starting Monday, ABC 15 Mornings is giving away a four pack of Disneyland tickets every weekday. You just got to listen for me to give you the word of the day. It's happening from 6 to 7 a.m. for your chance to win. Make sure you join us. It starts Monday on ABC 15 Mornings. Six twenty four and during the pandemic, so many people had to leave their jobs blaming child care issues, but the same people are now returning to work, and that is according to new federal data. Both parents are working in about 62% of homes right now with kids, and that's nearly at pre pandemic levels. The wives and the mothers, they were more likely to have to quit their job to take care of the child care, uh, and so that really fell on them. So I think uh, with more moms and wives being able to get back into the workforce, we'll see that kind of increasing. 
And the employment rate for single moms with kids under the age of three dropped during the pandemic, remaining low in 2021 while the expanded child tax credit was in place. Experts say, though, with that credit now gone, more moms will likely get back into the workforce. We do have a consumer alert for parents this morning. Thousands of car seats are being recalled after safety officials found pieces of foam can come loose and then become choking hazards. They're made by Cybex from 2017 to 2018. The company does plan to notify owners about how to seal the headrest correctly. A nonprofit in Chandler that's giving rides to seniors has a new set of wheels this morning. Neighbors Who Care provides transportation for seniors in Sun Lakes in South Chandler, getting them to doctor's appointments, to the grocery store, to do other errands. Last year, their van broke down. The community stepping in to raise enough money to buy them a brand new transit van. Well, how about a new place to eat? Burgers? Bacon and boozy shakes. It's what you can expect at Sid's Garage. We got your attention, didn't we? This place is coming to Desert Ridge Marketplace in Phoenix. The business is beloved in Idaho, and their motto is leave boring at the door. I like that. As you can see, their menu looks far from boring. The grand opening is going to be May 15th. I'll have one of everything. That looks so good. <laughs> Kaylee here is like mesmerized. Jaw dropped. <laughs> Well, next at 630, we remain on wildfire watch this morning. If you're just waking up, we have brand new information on the tunnel fire burning near Fly South. A live report coming your way in just three minutes. And we are taking a closer look at this year's wildfire season. The challenges that state leaders are now facing. A pregame performance that ended in panic. Why a baseball game involving our Diamondbacks had lawmakers scrambling to leave the Capitol. Well, temperatures are going to get warmer today. Highs reach the mid 90s in the valley, 60s, 70s and 80s up north. But then get ready. Temperatures are going to crash before the weekend as we track our next storm. That's also prompting stronger winds. I've got your super seven day forecast in the next half hour.